If you want to have beautiful borders, then it's really important to include some perennials that pl flower for a really long time. And these are the ones that flower for months on end, and very often you can clip them back and then they will have a second flowering. It's Alexandra here from the Middle Sized Garden YouTube channel and blog. And I'm here at Doddington Place Gardens in Kent in the Sunk Garden, which has got four herbaceous borders, each one around a pond. In my video on how to create beautiful borders, I interviewed Tom Brown of West Dean Gardens and one of the best tips he gave was that if you want to have flower colour in your garden all summer long, you should choose firework plants. And those are plants that are just so showy, they blaze brightly and people really remember them. And so they really carry the colour in your garden and that's things like tulips and irises and alliums. And I'll put that video in the description below. But the other element of creating a really long lasting, long flowering border is to choose these easy grow plants that flower and flower and flower. So I'm asking Amicia Oldfield, who with her husband Richard Oldfield owns Doddington Place Gardens, and the head gardener Lucy Adams, to pick out six plants which just go on and on flowering. I'll put links to Doddington Place Gardens and any other resources we mention in the description below, and also timestamps to particular flowers. So if you want to go back and have a bit of a look at a, one particular flower, then you can just click on the timestamp. If you're new here, the Middle Sized Garden uploads once a week with free videos with tips, ideas and inspiration for your garden. So do, if you want to see those videos when you open up YouTube, then do click the subscribe button. And if you'd like YouTube to tell you when a new video is uploaded, then tap the notifications bell. These plants are really quite easy grow plants. Doddington Place Gardens is in South East England, so that equates roughly to a hardiness zone, a USDA hardiness zone of eight or nine. But actually many of these six plants will go in a much wider zone. It'll be from four till nine. So that means they will deal with really quite cold winters, minus, down to minus 20 Celsius. The other thing to remember when you're choosing a plant, as well as hardiness, is how pollinator friendly it is. All these plants are very pollinator friendly. And also one of the problems with easy grow plants can be that when they're easy grow in one place, they're actually quite invasive in another. Now, none of the six plants here that we're mentioning are invasive in either the UK, the USA or Australia. But I think it's important to stay aware of what's invasive near you. It's also worth noting that each plant has got varieties. So for example, there is a variety of euphorbia, which is invasive in the United States, but most of the other varieties aren't. So just check the varieties because looking at varieties and getting the right variety is often the key to getting good long flowering, um, disease free and other things like that. And the next thing to think about is which way your border faces. If you've got a south facing border, then plants that like a south facing border will do very well there. Now, one of the interesting things about being here in the sunk garden is that actually there are four borders around a pond. And so of course each border has a slightly different aspect. So these favorite plants had to be chosen as plants that would do well in several aspects, not plants that really needed say a south facing border. So that's another interesting thing about these really easy care plants. So now I'm going to ask Amicia for her choice of three plants. Well, the, the plants that I that comes to mind, first of all, is a penstemon. And I know some people call them penstemons, but penstemon. You can get them in a wide range of colours and they are, have just begun flowering in the last week or so. And I think they go on till November, December. I've even picked some, I think, in December, which is pretty staggering, isn't it? And you do have to cut them back, but they're quite tall. You can get a great mass of them and they look very, very good in a border. And you can get really lovely pinky ones like um, star grapes or Stapleford gem. We've got a pink one here. I can't remember what that's called. There's Alice Hindley. There are all sorts of them and they're actually one of the plants that I liked the most when I first came here before I really knew anything about gardening and they're what's called good doers. We did this sunken garden, um, we, we forget what when you do things but we worked out we did it 11 years ago so they're still going and they show no sign of giving up and we've got one in the rock garden which we did at roughly the same time and that's still looking really great. The next plant is euphorbias. I like to talk about them generally. Euphorbias are very good value because they're very interesting shapes and they're leafy. They're not an obvious flowery plant. A lot of people, when they start off gardening, just want endless flowers. But actually, 
I think the more you garden, the more you realise that the contrasting leaf shapes are very interesting. And euphorbias flower for ages. The one that we have, Caracas, which is a big one, is only going over now and it's been in flower since, oh, I don't know, April or something. That's months and months, isn't it? You have to be a bit careful because the seeds obviously fly everywhere and I'm always putting out seed leaves, more than I've ever done actually before in the last few years. But there are a wide range of euphorbias and I think they're really excellent plants to have in a garden. Geraniums is the name of plants that everybody knows, isn't it, geraniums? But there are all sorts of rather special ones. And we have one here called, it's called Armenian Cranes. Well, it's quite a shocking pink. Magenta, perhaps, is a better term for it. I don't know. But it's quite a large, voluptuous plant, and it gets quite high. And it's also quite floaty at the same time. So it's a very good plant in a border. And what I recommend is, re is repeating all these things. Um, if you look at successful borders, in my opinion, they do quite a lot of repetition. We actually here don't have repetition as such in each border, but we've got four squares and, and we repeat the plants in the different squares. So that makes it cohesive and brings it all together. And then we put little pops of colour, little different things in at the same time. The geraniums stay in the ground the whole year. We cut them back by the end of the summer, August, when it gets so hot and dry, the leaves start to go a bit brown, so we cut them back then. But they do spring back and they are in flower. For, I don't know how long they've been in flower for now, three weeks or so, and they're going to go on and on and on until the autumn. And they look very good with dahlias, as we have quite a lot of brightly coloured dahlias, and they look good with those. And now I'm going to ask. Lucy Adams, head gardener, for her choice of three plants. Uh, a really good easy plant, uh, Nautia Macedonica, or the Macedonian Scabious. Beautiful colour, deep crimson, like a pincushion flower on it. Um, it flowers from May to September, and if you can keep on top of the deadheading, that will keep it flowering really well. Bees love it. Um, it looks good in most mixed herbaceous beds. It does tend to have a bit of a sprawling habit, so probably not one for the front of beds. Although if you are wanting it towards the front of your bed, then I would recommend either giving it a Chelsea chop um, before it starts putting on its long shoots for flowering, and that will just give it a bit more strength. Or if you've got birch sticks, just um, let it weave its way through some of those. So a Chelsea chop, and um, it's called that because you do it in May. So as the plant is putting on its lush growth, it in order to reduce the flopping that you get with them, um, certain plants like phloxes and things, if you uh, take off about a third of them, then it will give that strength to the stem and it will avoid it during the, the complete work when, when it's flowering. So if you don't want to be, or you haven't got the materials to go around staking everything, it's quite a quick and easy uh, thing to do. Uh, number two is an astrantia. Um, I just love astrantias. Uh, they're just such beautiful flowers. They're, I think they're known as the master wort. Uh, there's a huge variety of them. Uh, we've got various different pink ones like claret, shaggy, uh, roma. And they flower, they hold their flower really well. They're flowering from uh, very late spring through early summer, summer. And then once they've flowered, you can deadhead them and you'll get second flowering and they produce nice big clumps um, so they they will grow in size pretty quickly. They like um, a fairly fertile rich but well draining soil, uh, full sunshine, partial shade. They're you know they they will do well in most soils as long as they're not um, you know as long as it's nutrient rich. We always put our garden compost on in the spring because it also then helps as a weed suppressant as well and they always do well with that. The third may seem very unoriginal but roses. Roses, there's a reason why they're so popular and why they're everyone's favourites. If you can get one of the, especially the modern uh, repeat flowering uh, shrub roses, they go well with a herbaceous scheme, they go well on their own, they go well as a backdrop, they smell amazing, um, they flower and flower and flower and as long as you can keep on top of the deadheading then you'll have a good summer long display. I think choosing your type of rose you want to go for more of a bush rose, one of the modern shrub roses, which are fairly easy plants to grow actually, they're not too uh, pernickety. Um, we always give ours a good feed, uh, they get a feed, um, a seaweed feed, about four times a year. So uh, once in the spring and 
probably another just before flowering and then they'll get another in um, the end of autumn when, once they finish flowering um, just to harden them off before winter. But I tend to prune mine in my herbaceous beds a little bit higher than you would necessarily if you're growing the roses on their own in the winter. I leave them a little bit taller then the flowers will stand out above some of the um, much higher growing perennials that we've got in the garden. That's Felicia. Felicia and it's just an amazing scent. It just it just flowers from now or through to through to August. Then we have you have a little bit of a downtime when it's you know looking a little bit quiet and then again we'll come back. So yeah, it's a great rose. As I was leaving, I couldn't resist a bonus plant because these anthemists just look so gorgeous and they're just lovely mounds of light, cheerful colour in the border. So I've actually added this one as my own choice. Anthemists are also known as golden marguerite or Dyer's chamomile and they establish very quickly into lovely clumps and once they're established they're very drought tolerant. If you keep deadheading them they'll go on flowering for about three months and Lucy also has a clever trick. But what I generally do is I will do the Chelsea chop on the front half and then that supports the back half and then when that's finished having its first flush of flowers this one's flowering then you can deadhead that back to the new buds and then you get that sort of continuous flowering just to extend it that bit longer. I've pulled together all our creating beautiful borders advice in the beautiful borders playlist at the end of this video and if you'd like more tips ideas and inspiration then do subscribe to the middle-sized garden youtube channel and thank you for watching goodbye